God. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Cynthia Ruiz. I'm a professor. I'm an author, leadership expert, executive coach, and a mother. And I am just so excited to have this discussion today. You know, over the last week or so, I've been having discussions with different people, with my state senator, one of uh, my friends who's a renowned artist. And today, I invited some amazing, powerful women healers to have a conversation about radiating your light. We all know that right now there's a lot of darkness in the world because we're going through a transformation. Well, guess what? I believe once we get through this transformation, it's, the world's going to be a better place. So let's just jump right into the conversation. And I'm going to have the women introduce themselves, starting with Teresa. Hello, ladies. My name is Teresa Morris. I am a registered nurse, a former midwife. I'm now an international case manager. I'm a Reiki practitioner, and I use um, gemstones, meditation, and chakra doing my work with different clients. Welcome. Thank you. Jenny. Hi, I'm Jenny Estrada, also known as Sister Ruby Willow. I uh, retired early from corporate America to retool myself. I am a Reiki master, and that is my healing modality. I have studied a shamanic training of Peru and of Southern Mexico. I am a California licensed masseuse and esthetician. I am also an author, and I am godmother to many. Thanks. Nicola. Hi, my name is Shikoba. I am an intuitive hands-on healer, um, Kundalini yoga instructor, soul memory discovery facilitator, NLP practitioner, shaman, and mother to two beautiful puppies. Well, <clears throat> let's see, we have some amazing, powerful women to have this discussion radiating your light. And let's start off with Teresa. So, during this time of crisis, there are certain things that I do uh, to help to radiate light and also to keep myself in a positive place. One of the things I like to do, I like to be grounded. So I do not watch, listen, or hear a lot of the news that is out there. I try to only watch positive things. Comedies I find give me great relief and also that helps to raise our vibration. I also spend a lot of time in reflection and in being grateful for what I have, not what I don't have, but what I have. And I spend time in prayer and meditation. Um, whether one does classical prayer or classical meditation, I don't think it really matters. I think the important thing is to at least use some form or some practice where you are reflecting and being grateful for what you have and thinking of others that have so little. I also spend five minutes each day to give to myself. And when I give to myself, I use one of the forms, if you will, of, of energy or Reiki by placing my right hand on my forehead, my left hand over my heart, and I'm sending love to myself and to the universe. And the last thing I do is I will use essential oils to create a relaxing atmosphere in my home. And those things help me to stay grounded, to stay positive, and to look forward to the change that we're all going to experience when this crisis has passed. Thank you. Wow, beautiful. Sister Weeping Willow. Okay, I had to write this down because I have trouble um, remembering everything I have to say. So if I look down, I'm sorry but I certainly don't want to miss something. Um, when I left, when I retired, I, I took an early retirement and I chose to, as opposed to, I worked in corporate America and I chose to work on people's bodies and spirits. So um, I retooled myself and I became an, a masseuse and an esthetician. And in that journey, uh, Reiki came into my life, 
And then a little later on, I took classes in shamanic training from Peru and Southern Mexico. And this is where um, my idea came to me on what I needed to do during this time to help people. Um, I know that I found the light and the peace in the work that I do. And I wanted to share that. So I thought if I could only do one thing a day, you know, no matter how small or how large it is, just one thing a day. And, you know, nobody has to know that you've done something special, but um, to show somebody some light, because in the end, only kindness matters. So what I've done is I have, you know, I'm the old one in this group here, but I have people that are older than me that are my friends. And I make sure that if they need something from the grocery store, I make sure that I, when I go, I tell them and, and I've done shopping for a dear, dear friend of mine, little Mary, who I just love. You know, I've also started to write letters. I know it sounds kind of weird because, you know, you do everything on the computer, but I have some relatives that, um, I haven't met yet there in Arizona. Uh, and uh, so I sent out letters to them, uh, introducing myself and just wanting to know about another part of my family. Um, I have gathered, I have an orange tree on the side of my house and I say that they're magical oranges because they're blessed. And so uh, I bag up my oranges and I leave them on my neighbor's porches. In the beginning, I think they thought I was weird, but now they really enjoy the magical oranges. And um, Every day I pray, every day I go outside and whether it's raining or not, it doesn't matter because I have a porch and I sit outside and I, I face the San Gabriel Mountains and uh, my sister Lorraine, my shamanic sister Lorraine told me that that is where our power comes from, the San Gabriel Mountains. So I pray to the mountains and I pray in each direction and I do that every day. Um, so that way I don't miss anybody. And the prayer ceremony to me is, it truly grounds me. But when the first moment that I wake up, you know, I open my eyes, say, thank you, creator. Let's just see what we can do today. And I pray that he helps me. And however, whatever it is that he asks for me to do, I'll try. Uh, before I say goodbye, I would like to say, Thank you to all those doctors and nurses who are out there, to all those that are taking care of us, to my niece, Lauren, who's a doctor at Children's Hospital. I bless them all. And um, may they go home safely to their families. And God bless them. Aho. Beautiful. Shikoba. Hi, thank you, Cynthia, Teresa. Jeannie, that was beautiful. Um, yes, we are in crazy times right now. And um, just like the two beautiful ladies you heard from, I also try to limit the intake of news. I have the remote right here in, by my side. Uh, it's important to be aware of what's going on. It's important to be on top of it, but to limit the intake of news, it's very, very important. It's very important to keep your vibration high. So, and how do you keep your vibration high? Just like Teresa, if I want to watch TV, I'll watch things that bring laughter and joy into my life. Think about the things that bring joy to your life. Um, is it uh, music that you love to listen to? that you love to dance to? Is it doing puzzles? Um, how about to be of service to others? How about if you call your neighbors who are elders, um, put a post, if you live in an apartment complex, put a post up saying if anybody needs anything, um, you can be of help or find somebody that can help, uh, help them. So when you are in a state of service, your vibration changes. There is no time to be in a state of fear or panic or what's going on. Again, it's important to know 
but it's more important to keep your vibration high because each of us, every single person that's listening to this, you matter, your light matters, your energy matters. And every time you contribute, every time you let go of fear, every time you connect to your own heart and your own power, you're helping humanity, you're helping Mother Earth. So I beg of you, I challenge you. Meditation is wonderful. Prayers is wonderful. And to be of service in a state of gratitude is amazing. Wow. Beautiful. It's so interesting because as I was listening to these amazing women, I have a similar spiritual practice to keep me grounded during this chaotic time. You know, I do limit my content. You know, I start off every day with my gratitude list. I pray and I meditate. But I think for me, what the lessons walking away from this uh, experience is number one, that we are one world. I think we've seen through this virus that it knows no boundaries. It doesn't care if you're rich or you're poor, you're whatever race you are. We're at the end of the day, we're one world. And I think that as we come out of this, we are starting to already see signs of humanity. You know, big corporations that only cared about the dollar are now donating hundreds of millions of dollars to food banks. We're seeing the good side of people. And like I said, initially, it was a little bit of a shock to people, and we had to go through a grieving, grieving process. But now I'm starting to see the good. So I'm so excited about that. For me personally, I'm also using this time to what I call cocoon, meaning really just kind of drill down and self-reflection. I think Teresa mentioned that because once we come to the other end of this, this transformation, I want to become a butterfly. I don't want to be the same person that I started as. Not that I was a bad person, but our life journeys are always evolving. And if I could be a better person, I'm making sure that I'm exercising every day, I'm eating healthy. And what I recommend to people is provide structure in your life through a schedule. Because the outside is so chaotic, you have 100% control over your time, your family's time and what you do. So provide that structure so you can feel some kind of sense of normality. So the way, the lens that I look at, the whole situation through is my Native American lens. I'm Cherokee. My Cherokee name is Lion Mother. And with the Cherokees, we were always taught to look at situations taking into consideration seven generations before us, which are our, our ancestors, and seven generations in the future. So what that means to me is my ancestors taught me about living in balance, living in harmony and balance living in harmony and balance with the people around me, with Mother Earth, you know, having that balance and taking into consideration future generations, we have an opportunity here. During this crisis, 10, 20, 30 years, we want those people to look back and say, that was an amazing time because the world evolved. The world evolved into a better place. It didn't stay the same. So I think, you know, each of and every one of us have that responsibility or opportunity to work on yourself, become a better person. And as was said before by my amazing sisters here, is be of service. At the end of the day, it's about being of service. And I've seen so much humanity, even on the neighborhood level. I have neighbors leaving me notes that I don't even know saying, if you need anything, here's my phone number and whatever you need. And more people are having that sense of, of community because so many people complain they didn't have enough time to do anything. Well, guess what? We, the universe has given everybody a time out and it's time to realize what's important in your life and how can you be a beneficial presence on this planet. So Teresa, any closing thoughts and how can people get in touch with you? So my closing thought is that, you know, change is constant. How react, how we react to that change will determine the outcome. We're not in control of anything other than ourselves. And so to echo what you three ladies have so eloquently stated is that being of service, 
is one of the best things we can do for ourselves and the planet. And also to realize that at the end of this, we will be different in more ways than one. And hopefully we'll be a more humane uh, group of people that truly cares for the planet, the um, environment. Mm. And that we're going to leave a better planet for the children who have yet to come. To get in touch with me and to learn about anything else that I do teach, my website is uh, TeresaMorris.com and I'm also on Instagram under um, Chakra Life Energy and you can find me on Facebook just under Teresa I. Morris. Thank you very much, ladies. This has been really, really enjoyable today. Thank you all. Thank you. Teresa. How do you spell Morris? Because people spell spell it many ways. So it just said. It's uh, M-O-R-R-I-S. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Jenny. Well, um, I hope if anybody sees this, that they feel the love and the prayers and the light that we're sending out. Um, Thank you ladies for allowing me to join you. Now, I'm not as a spiffy as the rest of these ladies, but I am part of the Yota Mien Healing Movement. I am one of the founders of it with Gabi Torres and Cynthia Reese. Uh, and I'm Jenny Estrada on Facebook. Um, and if you wanna reach me, you can reach me there. And I will answer any question or any comment that comes my way. Many blessings and a hope. Love you, sister. Shakoba. Hi, so uh, closing uh, words are to trust your intuition. Uh, go within, as Cynthia said, this is a wonderful time. And uh, the other ladies have also mentioned it, uh, to go within. Um, and uh, how you can get a hold of me is um, you can, my website is quietmind.us, Facebook is quietmind.us, and so is Instagram. And I also have a personal um, Facebook, which is Shikoba Hawk Wing. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Cynthia, for this opportunity. And for those of you that want to reach out, my website is Cynthia M. Ruiz at C-Y-N-T-H-I-A-M-R-U-I-Z dot com. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm all over uh, social media. But I am just so excited because I hope this is the first of many conversations and I'm, I'm inviting you ladies back. I, I love this conversation. I think it, be, it can be continued. I think that everybody needs to hear it. And I also want to echo what Jenny was saying. Not only do I want to send love and light to the first responders, the healthcare professionals, but also the farm workers that are out in the fields, you know, picking the food, uh, the grocery workers, the people, all these delivery drivers. So anybody that's an essential worker out there, I just want to send you love and light and say thank you so much. Ladies, it's been fun. It's been an amazing time. Until next time, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.